Hello, it's Alex here. I thought I would take a break from Vlogmas to come back and give you these coat making tips that I talked about um, while it's all still fresh in my mind because otherwise I should forget it soon. Um, so I have cheated today. I'm not wearing anything me made. This was made by Mrs. John Lewis. Um, so just to reiterate what I said um, when I talked about doing this, it, I'm not suggesting that I'm an expert and um, I'm certainly not going to get into tailoring, pad stitching and all of that sort of thing. Um, these are just things that I find as a home sewist really help me when I'm making coats just get a slightly better finish. Um, I would say that if you're new to making coats, just as a starting point, it's probably quite good to work with a fabric that's got some kind of texture to it or a print. Although don't do what I did and choose something with um, checks or squares because then you get into pattern matching. But if you have something that's got a tweed or a, yeah, some kind of texture to it, it's much more forgiving than when you've got a plain colour. So that's um, definitely a good sort of starting point. Um, but in general, I would say that there are a couple of bits of equipment that will really help you. Um, I upgraded my machine in the summer to a faff, and one of the things you get included with your feet and all the rest of it is one of these. Um, you can buy them from most fabric shops. Um, I think they're called a humper jumper. Um, this one is has two sides, a slightly thicker side and a thinner side, and the idea is that you put it behind your foot when you're approaching uh, a part of your fabric where it gets really thick. So if you've got the intersection of a number of seams. Now, I didn't think I really needed one of those. I already had one of these, which is a Genima jig. Um, and I thought that did pretty much the same thing. But I find that this one, the Humper Jumper, because it has uh, two different two sides with two different widths I found that to be much easier and um, it does make a big difference especially good when it comes to top stitching because you've got this beautiful top stitching and then just at the point where you've got an intersection if you're not careful it's going to go you know you're going to get a slight wonk or something and it's a daft little thing but actually it makes a really really big difference so I would definitely get one of those I think that is more useful than that. Next thing is a pressing cloth. Now most people that sew have already got a pressing cloth, already use one. Um, mine has most definitely seen better days. I mean look at the state of that. That is Silk Organza which is brilliant because I have pressed the living daylights out of it and it still survives. You're supposed to be able to see through it but yeah I'm probably overdue uh, a new bit. Um, but you most definitely never want to press directly onto your um, cloth, either either wrong side or right side. The other tool that really helps if you've got one is a tailor's clapper. They're really good for uh, setting your seams and for when you're doing your points on your collars. Um, I bought mine quite a long time ago on Etsy, but I've seen a few around, so I'll put some links below. Um, they really do make quite a big difference. I wouldn't necessarily say you've got to rush out and buy one if you're just making one coat, but if you think it's something you might do regularly, I would recommend getting one of those. The main thing I do when I'm making coats, and not just coats, lots of other garments, is I use paper under the seam allowance when I'm pressing the seams to prevent ridges. So I will record a little bit of footage to show you what I mean by that. It does make the process a little bit slower, but if you've gone to the trouble of making a coat, you don't want to be walking around when, with um, seams down the sides or if you've got maybe a yoke on the back or something where you can see the seam allowances, you get ridges where the seam allowances are. It really spoils it and I think that is one of the telltale signs that something's been handmade. So I would really recommend um, that you don't do that. You can get seam rolls and they are designed to do the same thing the idea being that you press your seam allowance on top of the roll on the pinnacle of the roll i've just found that that doesn't work well for me i've tried it i find the paper method works much better so that is definitely something i would always do the thing that makes the biggest difference uh, between a sort of more professional looking finish when you've made your own coats is the finishing of the collar and the hem 
but probably the colour more because your eye is drawn to it. So the ideal is a pattern where the upper collar and under collar pieces are not the same. Um, you want your under collar to be cut on the bias, which means that it will always come as two pieces with a um, centre seam. And that's because that helps with turn of cloth and it helps it sit much nicer. And your top collar wants to be about five mil uh, wider along the top and bottom edges. And again, that helps not only for turn of cloth. I mean, we all know that when you press something, you want that seam line to be on the underneath that you don't see it, but it actually just helps with how the collar turns under. So if you've got a pattern where top collar and uh, under collar are exactly the same, I always change it. So I would either, depending on, you know, I and personal judgment, I would either shave off uh, five mil from the under collar or add five mil to the top collar just along the top and bottom edges you don't need to do it on the sides and I would also take my under collar piece and um, cut it on the bias you'll need to add a seam allowance in the middle maybe I'll do a little sketch or something so the thing I do with the colors that I think makes the biggest difference is to set it uh, into its correct shape before I've even finished making the coat. So I'd usually do that at the end of the day, or if I know I'm not gonna be coming back to it for a good couple of hours, it needs a long time. And what I do is I take my tailored ham and I pin the neckline onto the tailor's ham in exactly the right position so that your any lapels are you know completely equal in distance and that fold here is exactly how I want it because you don't want to be pressing that um, but I've certainly made things where that's not set and that is a really big sign that something's not finished properly so pin it steam the bejesus out of it with your iron i probably wouldn't even touch my iron, touch it with the iron I'd just steam it maybe grab gently kind of set it with your hands and then leave it alone don't touch it until it's stone cold and dry so whatever the steam you know all the steam is gone all the steam is evaporated and that makes a huge difference because that collar is now set beautifully the turns are all right makes a big difference the other area that i think makes quite a big difference is your shoulders um i find that it makes a big difference if you make a sleeve head and include a sleeve head into that area and the job of the sleeve head is it's just a piece of fabric that goes into that top area and keeps everything smooth you've got a lot of messy seam allowance where you've eased things in and i just feel that it kind of creates a bit of a cushion and it keeps everything really nice and smooth here. And to do that, you're basically cutting two strips. I've always used the same fabric as my coat. I guess if you're using something very thick, that might not work, but um, that's what I've always done. So you cut two strips, you cut them on the bias, and they need to be about seven centimeters wide by around about, basically it's gonna go from kind of mid, um, from the top of your armhole here to the other side so measure that and you're going to want to steam it into a semicircle um, but before you do that you fold over around about a third i'll hopefully have some little images to show you and then you take your iron in the middle of the um, sleeve head and steam it, whilst you're steaming it, you're pulling the fabric round, so you're manipulating it into a circle. Once you've done that, you end up with two strips that are kind of semicircular. just using your scissors round off the end, end, so you've not got a sharp end, and you then sew that into the um, seam allowance up here, and you sew it so that the short edge that you've folded over, that's the one third, is against the body and the longer edge is against the outer part of the sleeve and that just keeps everything really neat you only need to tack it in you don't need to worry too much about it uh, because it's going to be sandwiched between the outer uh, fabric and the coat lining 
but I find that makes a huge difference. The other thing that I find really helps with the shoulder seam is to steam everything there from the outside and I'll see if I can demonstrate what I mean by that. But basically, again, you're steaming the um, life out of it and using your hands to smooth everything over. And again, I find the time that takes is absolutely minimal, but it really makes a difference. And again, anything like that that you're steaming, you want to leave it alone while it sets. Don't steam it and then kind of have it crumpled around your machine. Just give it, put it to one side, don't put it on a hanger that's going to kind of, you know, push the sides out. Just leave it to set. Patience is what you need when you're making coats. Once you've got to a certain point in uh, the construction, you're going to get to top stitching. And the one that you're really gonna, your eye is really going to be drawn to is the top stitching around the front. So just bear in mind the break point at the front. And that's the point where nine times out of ten, your coat is going to be uh, straight up from the hem up to the break point, but then it kind of veers off at an angle to create a lapel or a collar. And your top stitching always wants to be on the outer facing, and that will change at that break point. So be mindful of that um, and just make sure that you're kind of manipulating it so that your top stitching always stays however many millimetres from the edge up to the break point and then you kind of have to cross over a bit and out again. I've got this uh, camel coat to show you that I made a few years ago and I've probably worn it twice um, because I just don't think it, I do think it looks a bit handmade. Um, one of the things that bugs me about it is um, at the front hem. No matter what I did to it, that front hem was trying to kick out and um, it just wasn't draping properly, it's not lying properly, it doesn't look very good. And ever since I made that coat, I've made a small change to every coat I've made and it makes a big difference. And that is to put a coat weight in, um, in that hem. I've looked for dress hem weights and I can't find them. So I always use these and they are curtain weights. They look like coins. They basically look like big metal coins. Um, I think they're made of lead. I have heard that you can just use coins and just sew it into a little bag made of interfacing or some scrap fabric and use it that way. But basically I just hand sew one of those into the front corner there and that has made a huge difference. You just don't get that flappy front hem thing um, that kind of is a bit of a handmade uh, coat giveaway. So then we get onto lining and I was uh, took me quite a while to get around to making a coat with a lining because I thought it was quite intimidating, but it's not really. Usually the instructions are pretty good and basically you're making two coats and, and putting them together. Um, I know lots of people in the sewing community like the method whereby you um, sew your lining to the hems of your sleeves and to the hem of your coat. You leave a gap on the side of the lining fabric and then you pull it all through everybody talks about birthing it and then you hand stitch that up now i do that with my sleeves but i don't do that with the hem um, so it means i don't have to worry about i can don't have to worry about leaving a, a gap on the side seam i do the hem of the coat myself so i will always make sure that the um, lining pieces are exactly the same length as the coat pieces so i want my lining to be the same length I will always interface my hem whether the pattern asks for it or not and I personally I don't like fusible interfacing very much so I'll always use the sew-in interfacing, um, baste that in and then take those stitches out later on. Um, and So I lightly press the hem, I use a hand catch stitch to put that in place and then while I'm doing that make sure that my hand is on the right side of the fabric so that I can feel if the needle comes through um, so therefore you know that you're never going to see it. So I catch stitch the hem and the interfacing in place and then I take my lining, I take my coat, smooth down the lining and then I fold the lining under so that it's more or less the same level as the coat hem. Give it a light press Move the hem of the lining up so that it just covers those catch stitches. I pin it in place and then using a fell stitch, I stitch that under. 
And what that means is that you've always got an ease pleat. You lightly press the ease or the jump pleat in place and then all you've got to do is hand stitch the sides of your facing. And for me, I find that gives a really good finish. Um, your lining's never going to poke out below, but it's never going to be too short and pull the um, coat fabric up. And I just feel it gives a much better finish. So once the lining is in place, uh, the other thing that I like to do, which doesn't take very long, it is hand stitching, but it, honestly, it's like 30 second job. And that is just to um, tack the lining to the coat fabric um, under the arm here. So it just keeps everything in place when you're taking your coat on and off. It's not all a big bagged out mess. So just, oh look, this jump is rather handy. Just at literally the point, this point here in your coat, I take the lining fabric and just with a couple of hand stitches, tack it right through to the outer fabric um, just to keep that in place. Just find that gives it a really good finish. So nobody likes doing buttonholes, do they? Um, but I'm afraid to say my top tip with buttonholes is to forget the one step buttonhole program and do some experimenting and learn how to do them manually. I really think it is the only way. It's the only way you're gonna control them and the only way that you're gonna guarantee that they're consistent because those one step buttonhole things, they never work every time. So that's the way I do it. Um, I am a great fan of the method whereby you have some thread under the stitches, either embroidery thread or I actually use woolly nylon, but only because I happen to have some knocking around that needed using up. So you've got a little hook on the back of your sewing machine foot that you hook your thread round, you bring it back under the foot and then as your machine is doing the zigzagging for the buttonhole, that thread is caught underneath the stitching. It gives it a really nice finish. My tip is to leave plenty of that thread so that you've got really long tails because when you come to cut the hole in the middle, and for goodness sake, don't use a seam ripper, definitely get a buttonhole chisel. I find that it's quite hard to get those buttonhole chisels right in the middle without accidentally cutting any of the stitches. So if you do cut the stitches, by accident, um, you can thread a needle onto the tails of the, um, in my case, the woolly nylon, uh, of the thread you've got under your stitching, and then just go back and hand stitch over those cut stitches so it makes it really neat. Um, I just find that works really, really well. And I don't really use fray check. Um, I have done, in fact, I have done for quite a long time, but I find that it kind of makes the buttonholes too stiff and um, I find that waxing the buttonhole to be a much better method. So I cut it first with the chisel, if I need to repair it at all with the thread that's underneath then I do that, um, you know, get rid of the tails, finish all of that off and then I use hot wax on the buttonhole to keep it all nice and neat. I'll see if I can do a little demonstration to show you how to do that. I mean, be careful because it's a hot iron, um, but hopefully that will make sense. And I just find that to be a really, really good method. So that's about it. Hiding from the sun here. Um, I just think go for it. I know I had a bad coat experience recently, but in general, making coats is great fun. I definitely think you get more bang for your buck. Uh, it's a great sense of satisfaction and um, if anyone's got any good tips please share them because we could all learn that would be great i'm off now to make a pair of jeans and have a cup of coffee because i'm a bit hoarse okay thank you very much bye